Good afternoon. It is a privilege to be here. My wife, Yu Chunan, and I, we are very grateful to be here, to be again invited by the Myeongsong Church, to, do, to be able to, to have been able to assist to the conference, the missionary conference. And it is also a privilege to speak here. I came here to listen to you, and now you came to listen to me. Thanks a lot. Kamsa Hamida. Uh, we, we had on our heart not to give, like usually, uh, so much a teaching and an explication about the Bible. We had more on our hearts to, to share, to share testimony and to speak about the needs in the Muslim world, in the, in the, in the world, in the, and especially in Belgium. I, uh, when I was 17 years old, I came to, to faith in the Lord Jesus, and my life started to change. And then, about two years later, I really gave my life to the Lord. I, the Lord spoke me very clearly through Romans 12, verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. God is worthy for us to offer our bodies to him, to offer our lives to him. As we sang in the last song we sang in, together, I, I gave my life to you. Amen. And when I was 19 years old, I said to the Lord, Lord, I give you my life. For me, change me, use me, send me wherever you want me. I, uh, I want to live for you. I don't want to do my own will. I want to do your will. I want to be on the place where you want me to be. And then I got on my heart that year to go to a Bible school. And uh, I had a good time, a wonderful time there. And there we got information about needs in the, in the world. And it was said that uh, one on every five persons on this world are Muslims. 20% of the world population is the Islamic, but only 2% of all the missionaries work among them. And that gave me a burden. It gave me a big burden for the Muslim world. I started to pray for the Muslim world. And in the last year of the Bible school, I started to work also on, among Muslims in Belgium. And uh, after the Bible school, I joined a mission. I had the privilege to, to be with a mission, to be trained with a mission. And the mission sent me to Tunisia. And that, that I stayed only for one year and a few months because I was expelled from the, prison, from the, from the country. I, I was a few days in prison. Offic officially, it was because I could not renew my, my, um, my, my, uh, my papers. But it seems that, uh, that non-officially, in the reality, it was because I shared the gospel too much. I gave often uh, literature. Okay, you can we can put the first slide, please. And uh, then in France, as uh, let me see, uh, Tunisia. Oh no, what is actually Tunisia. Excuse me. This is the Muslim world, and Tunisia is is the most northern country of Africa, in the middle. And um, when I was back in France, where the, where the mission sent me, I met a brother who had the same burden as me for the Muslim world. And we got on our heart to go to a country, a Muslim country, where there is very much freedom still to share the gospel. And so in, in 1983, I went to Senegal. And Senegal is, is the most Western country at the west coast of Africa. 
and there I uh, had the privilege to to be 26 years. And there I did the greatest discovery that I did since I, I, I knew the Lord. A wonderful discovery. I met Yu Chunan. <laughs> and the Bible says, he who, <clears throat> who finds a wife, finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. It's Proverbs 8.22. We we started we continue to do our our works. Chunan she had uh, sewing centers, and she continued with her sewing centers. And I had a bookshop, and I continued with my bookshop. Most things we did not do together, but some things we did together after our marriage. We um, we showed films. We did book stands together. And we started church together. And it was, a one, it was wonderful to have a wife beside me who, who loved me and I loved her. <laughs> I thought that I would stay the rest of my life in Senegal because, uh, it, it, as I said, it is, there is much freedom in Senegal and also there was openness. People came to the Lord. But then suddenly, in, in 2011, God started to speak to us. And we didn't understand. I, I, I really didn't understand in the beginning. And then finally it became very clear to us that God said, the, 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 I close the door for Senegal. You are on a way that stops. But I, I open another door for you. I sent you to Europe. And I never thought about becoming a missionary in my own continent and especially not near my own country. But the Lord made it so clear, he said it so clearly, that we became enthusiastic about it. We, we, because the best place in the world to be is to be where, where God wants you to be. So because may, God made it so clear that he wants us to be in Belgium, I was glad about it. We were enthusiastic. We prepared ourselves. And God gave even the... the the time he wanted us to go. And he made clear that he wanted us that he wanted us to Belgium. To go to Belgium. Belgium is in the middle of Europe. And Belgium has as capital Brussels as you know and Brussels is sometimes called the capital of Europe because the European institutions are in, in Brussels. The European Parliament is there, the European Commission is there, uh, the Council of Europe is there, and, and other European institutions are there. Belgium is not a very big country. It has only 11 million inhabitants. It's a small country in Europe, but it belongs to the six countries that started the European Communion. And it has a big influence. It is an important country in the European Communion. And especially Brussels has a big influence. This is also a photo from the, Euro for, from the European Parliament. Belgium is a difficult uh, country to govern because it has six governments. It has also six parliaments. It is, a it is a divided country. The north speaks Dutch and the south speaks French and the, at the east uh, some people speak German. And in Brussels it is all mixed. In Brussels uh, they speak the three languages and they speak also Arabic and Turkish and other languages. And one of the problems of Belgium is that it remained Roman Catholic. During the Reformation, the northern countries of Europe became Protestant, but the southern countries like Belgium and France 
Portugal, Spain, Italy, and also countries from the Eastern Europe, they stayed Catholic. And the Catholic Church has not been a good testimony. What is interesting is that the northern countries of Europe, they became very prosperous, while the southern countries had a big inflation and were less prosperous. Now I have a question about that. Can you, can you guess why the, the southern countries were less prosperous than the northern countries? What do you say? It's a cold weather and the diligent to the people. Uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's, true. that's a physical uh, aspect. Uh, it's cold in, in nor the northern of Europe and people are a little bit more di diligent. That's true. But I think that is also a spiritual reason. Can someone also mention spiritually? Yes? Categories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the real Christians, they pray, yeah. the people that are born again, they have fellowship with God, yeah. and uh, they, they draw the blessing of God. Also, in the, in the northern countries, the Bible had influence, there was more honesty, people could trust one another, people would, could work together, there was more, less corruption, there was less mafia. So, the... the uh, the northern countries became more prosperous. And it's interesting, it's beautiful, it's a testimony of the faithfulness of God. Now I want to share a little bit about the ministry that the Lord gave us in Europe. The next slide, please. The ministry that God gave us, the maybe the main ministry, has been to sing. And we sing mainly on market days. We, we have all kinds of contacts when we sing in, in Belgium. And the Lord led us also to sing outside Belgium. He led us to many European countries to proclaim the faithfulness of God, to proclaim our faith in God, to proclaim the victory of Jesus Christ, to, to proclaim salvation through Jesus Christ, to also show boldness. And then another ministry that the Lord gave us is work among prostitutes. It is Chunan who got the, the call to visit prostitutes. She does it once a week with a very faithful sister. And once a week she does it with me, then I walk just beside, behind her and I try not to look to, look to the prostitutes. Uh, and, and once a week, she, different times a week she does it alone. And what she mainly does is to give a card. Next. She gives a card to people with a Bible verse. And that cards we, we make in different languages. Here we made them in eight languages, and totally we have made them in 17 languages. Mm -hmm. All that languages are spoken in Brussels by prostitutes. It are mainly uh, East European languages like Albanian, Romanian. And uh, Chunan prays with every prostitute that receives a card. And she tries to speak with them. I myself work uh, about four times a week among refugees. In Brussels there are many refugees. Brussels is a, is a way for refugees to go to England. Refugees come uh, very often from Sudan nowadays and also from Eritrea, and they, they very often think that once they reach England, they will have papers, and they will have work, and they will have peace, and they will have all that they want. Unfortunately, very often, they even don't reach England, and if they reach England, they don't have always papers and work. 
uh, we share weekly coffee and tea on, on a station where there are many refugees. We live near this station, the North Station of Brussels. And weekly, the church, two times a week, the church invites, invites refugees for a meal. And then always the word of God is shared. We not give only a physical meal, we give also a spiritual meal. We, we can give literature to people. And another ministry that children and I have together uh, is to have a, what we call a coffee bar. We do that in the center of, use of the Salvation Army. And we always sh share a film. Weekly we, we project the film. And at the end of the film, we give a, a conclusion and we share the word of God. And it are mainly refugees that come. And something else we do is to go to villages. At the moment it is near Brussels, but uh, maybe later it will be also farther away. We make letters, here, here I am making the letters, with a bookmark in it. And we do them in post boxes of houses. And then one week later, we go back to that houses and we, we tell people, we gave you a letter one week before and we want to offer you a New Testament. And then people accept the New Testament. We, we know them as our contacts. And later we go back to them. And that's how we would like to start churches. Okay, this is at the moment the last slide. Thank you. So we, sh we share the word of God, we, we sow the word of God, and we are very happy about it. Because we know that the word of God is powerful. As Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11 says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed, for the sower and the bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I send it. Now I want to share a little bit about needs of, of Brussels and Belgium. As I said, uh, Belgium is, is remain, did remain Roman Catholic, and uh, the Roman Catholics passed through many scandals, uh, child abuse especially. The media have spoken a lot about it and still speak about it. Still scandals come to light. And uh, many people turned away, Most, m the, the big majority of the Catholics turned away from the, from the church. And often they don't know another church than the Catholic church. So there are many, many church buildings everywhere. There are church buildings, beautiful monuments, often about from the Middle Ages, but they are empty or nearly empty. Only some older, older people often uh, go there. God is also moving in the, in the Catholic Church. I, I don't want to be too negative. There is also a charismatic movement with young people. But what people see mainly is nearly empty ch church buildings, and it is not a good testimony. They hear about scandals. And then the second problem of Brussels is uh, the Islam. At the beginning of last century, uh, many Moroccans and Turks came to Belgium to work. They, they were welcomed for their labor. And they settled themselves, they bought shops, they started businesses, and they are very well settled. Especially Brussels has a very great population, a great percentage of Muslims. It has a 24%, 24% of the population of Brussels is Islamic. And these, uh, these communities continues to grow 
because the, the Muslim families often have more children than the other families. And also for the second reason is that uh, many refugees start to continue to come to Brussels. That's the third problem that I want to mention. So many migrants, real refugees, many trans migrants as they are called, they are on their way to England, but many of them stay also. And it is a difficult problem because they come from, from countries where there is war often, or countries where there is very much corruption, and where there is not any future for, for them. And if they are sent back, they can end up in prison, they, in prison they can be tortured, and so on. So the Eritreans, for example, the, government, the Belgian government doesn't send them away. They cannot send them back. Sudanese also usually they cannot be sent back. When we were in Senegal, we often heard about Senegalese leaving for Europe. Sometimes someone from our neighborhood suddenly disappeared. And when we asked where he was, it was said he, he, he's on his way to Europe. So it is not so easy. And then a fourth problem in Brussels has been bombings in 2015. In one day, 32 people were, were killed in two bombings, one in a metro train and one in, uh, on the airport. And after that, there was an enormous mobilization of the army and police to, to avoid more bombings and to make Brussels again attractive for tourist, tourists because Brussels is a very touristic town. And then the fifth problem that is the biggest, I believe, that are the consequences of disobedience to the word of God, the consequences of, of unbelief. The, the Bible is, is believed by a, a small majority of, of, the, of the Belgians and even by a majority of, whole, of, the, of the Europeans. So there is more and more atheism. There is very much materialism. Most people, they, they think about their money, their assurance, their, their retreat and so on, but not at all about God. And that opens the door for false religions like Buddhism and even Satanism. It uh, also brings legal prostitution because if, if the prostitutes they have their papers, they can legally become prostitutes. There is also much illegal prostitution. There is homosexuality, homosexuality more and more. There is transgendering. That means that people change their, especially men that want to be women. And Yunnan is in contact with quite a number of them. She, she invites them even to our house sometimes, and we, we visit also sometimes transgender men that make themselves women. Often it's difficult to see that they are men in reality. And the abandon of the word of God brings a lot of divorce. Half of the new marriages in Belgium are ending in a divorce. Satan doesn't like marriage. And uh, it brings abortion. It brings alcohol abuse, drug abuse, crime. <coughs> I'm now for about 10 days in, 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 in Korea, but I didn't hear a police alarm. I was, most of the time I was in Seoul, but I didn't hear a police alarm. But in, in Brussels, we hear about nearly all the time police alarms and alarms from the, from the fire brigades and, uh, and so on. And the police complains that they are, they are too busy, that they have too, too few people, that they are under-equipped. And Belgium is also a country of depression. There is, there is a high rate of suicide. It is much higher than the average rate in Europe. 
last week, when, uh, two weeks ago, about when I distributed tracts, a woman said, uh, what is it about? I said, the title of the tract is God Loves You. She said, uh, I don't believe in God. I believe in Satan. I'm a Satanist. I said, uh, God loves you. He wants the best for you. But Satan, he hates you. He, he wants to destroy you. And I insisted for her to take the tract. And the, the, the physical, the spiritual dark, darkness, sin in Brussels, also uh, is seen in, in physical in physical dirt, the spiritual dirt is also expressed by physical dirt. There is very much graffiti on walls, uh, and the, 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 the streets are, are often more or less dirty. We, we visited many uh, European capitals. We found them all clean, only Brussels. Brussels is, is, a, is a city that is relatively dirty. So now I have a question for you. Is there hope for Europe? Is there hope for Europe? Yes. 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 Amen. Amen, amen. Okay, that's, that's sufficient. Yes, there is hope for, for Europe. Yes, yes, yes. Because God is faithful. God is almighty. Amen. God is in control. Amen. God hears the prayers of his people. And there is now more and more prayer in Belgium more and more prayer in Europe and for Europe. One of the new things is that since 10 years, prayer houses are started. There is even a prayer house, the main prayer house in Brussels, or maybe for the moment it is the only prayer house, the only one that I know. It is very near the, the European Commission. And there is more and more prayer. And there are prayer houses on, on quite a number of other places in Belgium. There are quite a number of prayer houses in Holland, in, in England, and so on. God uh, puts, puts in the hearts of his people to pray, to intercede. The darkness is great, but it, it, it motivates the people of God to pray. And when the darkness is great, the lights that there are shine brighter. The lights that are, are, are seen. So it is for Christians more and more more and more easy to, to, to let their light shine, to, for their light to, to be seen. Uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and future. Amen. It is also for Europe. God has plans for hope and future. And I believe that still many Europeans are going to see the Lord. To see, to find the Lord Jesus. It is written in Revelation 22, verse 11, the last verse, the last chapter of the Bible. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right. And let the holy person continue to be holy. The, the, the difference between people that walk in darkness and people that walk in the light becomes more and more clear. And that gives hope. That gives hope for growth of the church and for God to be glorified. And now I come back to the verse we read in the beginning. We read before the, the message. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. We are therefore God's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeals through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So we, God calls us his ambassadors. An ambassador is like a missionary. He's, he's sent away from his country. And he represents his country. And we are, represent, we are representations of the kingdom of heaven. So, be aware that you are an ambassador. Even if you, if you uh, are in Seoul, you maybe work in Seoul, uh, as soon as you leave, you leave this church building, you are in the world. And uh, you represent the kingdom of God. So, be aware. 
that God wants to use you. You are a missionary where you are. And I hope that the Lord will, will still call many missionaries also to go to regions in the world where the need is greater than in, than in, in Korea. Uh, South Korea is very much blessed through, through the work that God has done and is doing. And I, I want to, to finish by thanking you for your prayers. Can you give the, the, the red? Uh, in, the, in Joshua 2 is the story of Rahab. And Rahab, she puts a, a red cord uh, out of her window. And I believe that your prayers are like a red cord out of your window. God sees them. They are the testimony. And, and the red cord brought to, to Rahab blessing to her and to her whole family Amen. and to friends. Your prayers are a blessing for yourself, for your family, mm -hmm. and for the people you pray for. Thank you so much for your prayers. Amen. I'm always very encouraged in Korea by seeing the diligence, by seeing the prayers, by seeing the work of God in answer on prayers. God bless you.